Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at MX Fluxbox. Now, I've taken a look at the most recent version of MX Linux before, and I was highly impressed by it. I really, really enjoy the MX tools that they provide and the extra effort they, they've seemed to put into just kind of developing their own little ecosystem that doesn't really rely on anything directly from Debian. And I think it's that effort to make their distro a little bit more unique that kind of draws a lot of people to it. I mean, there's a, we make a lot of fun of distro watch and all the spam bots that probably drive up the rankings or whatever, but a lot of people do like MX Linux. Their premier ISO or whatever features XFCE and a window manager called Fluxbox. And I'd never heard of Fluxbox before, so I took a first look at it and recorded a video and I smashed it to smithereens. I just did, I was, I was very, very negative on it. It was not a good experience. And mostly, and I'll show you what I mean here in a minute, mostly it was the looks that turned me away. I'll admit that I'm a biased kind of guy. I'm a tiling window manager guy. That's just how I prefer to do business. So I'm not a big floating manager. You know, I don't have a lot of interest in floating manager, floating window managers. So when I tried this, I was like, eh, not only their looks kind of meh, but it's also a floating window manager and it's just weird. And I'm not exactly sure why it exists. And it was, like I said, I was completely negative on it. So I was so negative on it. I haven't posted the video. I still like it's all done. And that was like a week ago. And I've just decided not to publish that one. I decided to do a, kind of do a little bit of research over why Fluxbox exists. Who is it for? And I've decided to take another look. Now, I don't know that I'm any more positive on it than I was when I did that first video. But I do think that. I don't hate it as much as I originally did. So let's just, let me show you what Fluxbox look, looks like. So this is Fluxbox. Now this is not what it looks like by default. Honestly, I don't remember what it looks like by default. It does have this menu or this panel up here and this panel over here, uh, which I believe it's actually cutting off part of the panel. I wonder how I'd go about getting all that back. Let's try logging out and logging back in. I'll admit that, yeah, see, there, it was cutting some stuff off there. I think that has to do with the XF or the virtual box resizing thing. It had nothing to do with MX. This is how it's set up out of the box, but the, I've changed the theme. It's like a really ugly gray theme out of the box. And it has a lot of available themes, but they're all flat. So let me, let's start off with the looks. Shall we just. The thing that turned me off the most was the looks. So let's let's start there. So there's actually a ton of little of um, which one? It's a style that I'm looking for. So there's actually quite a few of them here that you can choose from. There's a few MX specific ones. I think this is the one that comes by default. This really weird gray one. But there are some that like this one here is not too bad. And then there's a few that are like really weird. Like that one there is almost completely unusable because, I mean, you can't read that text like at all. And a lot of them are kind of like that. So I've kind of went through like all these and tried to... Like that one's not too bad. Some of the, like the ones that have a white background just aren't usable. So we're just going to go back to the one that I found up here. Which one was it? It was this one here. So like, the original, though, the first impressions on the looks just was not something that was all that impressive to me. Now, like I said, it's a floating window manager, so you are going to be using your mouse a lot. So that was another thing that if, if you're, what, what this reminds me quite a lot of is actually open box because Openbox has the same kind of right-click menu thing, and it's actually managed kind of the same way. If you want to add things to this menu, you would go through and 
edit a configuration file and add things that way. I believe it's through something like XML. I'm not actually sure. I haven't actually tried it, but it for sure is something that you can do through a configuration file. So, and, and, and OpenBox does the same thing. Now, this isn't as minimal as OpenBox. I don't even think OpenBox comes with a bar out of the box. I think you have to come up with a bar like Tint2 or something if you're going to use a bar with OpenBox. This one here has obviously has panels and all that kind of stuff. Now, I believe these are like homegrown panels. These are something that are something that Flux, the developers of Flux, Fluxbox have actually gone through and coded themselves. And the reason why I say that is because like this kind of resembles like a plank or something like that, but it's not actually that because there's no other intera interaction with it other than, you know, clicking on it and launching something. And I'm actually not sure. This is not something that I've tested. So let's go to all apps. Now, this is another thing that's a little weird. I believe this is D menu. I'm not sure. It could be Rofi, but I'm not sh actually. You want let? I think I should be able to find. Where's that terminal? Terminal. Let's see if I can locate D menu. No, it's it's Rofi is what it is. Um, so that that's for sure because it has a Rofi theme seems here. Okay. Um, so that is Rofi, but so if you've used Rofi before, you know that it doesn't just list your applications. It lists every package on your system that's executable. So if you hit the super box, they've gone, you have access here to pretty much everything, but they've somehow managed it so that it is just the packages that you can like actually run. But because this is, is, based on XFC, there's actually two ways or th sometimes three ways to actually browse through your file. So you can actually use a, this application finder as well. Now, what I wanted to find out was like, if let's say I open up this here. This doesn't actually show up on this bar over here. And I'm not actually sure how you'd go about adding something to this bar. I'm assuming maybe it's through another configuration file. So this is actually, so this comes with a bunch of help files in different languages. So we'll open up the English one here. What is Flux? So it says Fluxbox is a window manager that controls the placement and appearance of windows. That's what a window manager is. For history and overview, consult Wikipedia. Okay, so after a little bit more research, it does look like there's ways to go through and customize their dock thing using something called Dock Maker. So if we appearance docs dock maker and this this tool allows you to create a new dock with one or more applications. So let's edit the one that we have here. This is the default dock and this would be how you go through and add an icon or an application. Now I'm not one to tell developers how to do something, but I will say this. We have developed ways of adding icons to docs that are easier than this apparent four or five step process. This is a rigmarole if I've ever seen one. It's very, very weird. Now, it's not a huge deal because you could go through and just create your icon dock in whatever way you wanted. And it's just kind of set and forget. Yes, it was probably a pain in the ass to set up. But who cares? You've only done it once and then you don't need to do it again. And if you need it, if you needed it added uh, an, a an icon or an application some other time, it would just be a matter of editing like I'm doing here. But it's just weird. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, I could come back to that. It's just a weird way of doing things. So, because we know from this, I, this panel up here, that they can have panels that are aware of thing windows that are open. So this could be aware of what applications you have open, and then you could just you know right click on it and say pin to dock. That's the way you would traditionally do something. It, it's just. That's just, this is just one of the many things that are just weird. Now, 
one of the things about window managers is they're all weird. So there's nothing wrong with being a little odd. This isn't for me. So that's the reason why I keep coming back to and saying, like, this is just not good. But after a week or so of off and on looking at other people using this, I can see some of the appeal. First of all, it's on MX Linux, so that you know that it's a running a very solid Debian state. It has a whole bunch of tools, the MX tools that allow you to customize things and, you know, manage your system in ways that traditional Debian really can't because it doesn't have access to those tools. So you have that. And Fluxbox itself kind of grows on you after a little while because it's um, quaint. It's it's eclectic. You know, it's uh, it's that thing you want to use every once in a while just because it's different. You know, it's not something that's exactly the same as everything else out there. And that's what kind of where I've been for the last week. Like, this is not my cup of tea, but it's kind of refreshing to use something that's not just a simple standard tiling window manager that's the same as all the other tiling window managers. Because, I mean, let's face it, XFCE and DWM and all these tiling window managers, other than the code that they're written in, they're all basically the same. I mean, they have the same options and the same features and there's a reason why guys like DistroTube and and Brody and all those guys go through, and every time they switch to a different window manager, they go through and make their window manager look the same as all the other window managers. It's because they can, because that's basically all tiling window managers are exactly the same. I, I mean, they have the same features, you just it's a matter of implementation. That's why window managers kind of like Fluxbox and probably... Uh, open box appeal to some people because they're not the same and I think that's where I was really having problems when I first looked at this because this is so different from the way that I usually do things it just didn't appeal to me so I've come around to it because it is kind of weird in a refreshing way um would I want to use it full time? No, I, absolutely not. Um, this would drive me batty. This whole, I mean, just there are just so many little. There's nothing particularly wrong with it, like at all. But it's all the little irritations, like adding a a a, do, a menu item to the the dock, or oh, the odd use of the the super key. The super key brings up Rofi. Apparently, that's what this is, and I'm so used to using the super key as a modifier key instead of just an actual key. So, like, if I were a, like a, a GNOME user, I'd be perfectly happy knowing that the the super key just brought up a menu because that's basically what it does in GNOME. It brings up a, a you know a, the activities menu or whatever. But I'm so far removed away from that. I mean. Super menu in everything that I use, be it Plasma or DWM or whatever, it's a modifier key for me. It brings up other things. So this would be another thing that's just really weird. And the discoverability of key bindings in Fluxbox is also a little weird. So we know F4 brings up another terminal, and F5 brings up MX Tools, F3 brings up Thunar, F2 brings up Application Finder, which you can't get out of unless you exit out of, F1 brings up Help, just like, I mean, like you'd expect, F6 is the Application Finder from XFC, F7, but, you know, I keep doing this, but there's nowhere that it actually says this. Now, I have not gone through the documentation as much as I should have. Probably. Because I'm sure that the key bindings are here somewhere. So you can switch 
workspaces by doing control plus F1 plus F2. So control F2, F3 controls the workspaces. So then we have a pager up here. Now if I change this to a different, to the traditional one, which eventually hopefully that'll come up. It did. So I like this traditional layout a little bit better because the pager down here is kind of cool. So it has, it shows all of your workspaces. You have three workspaces and then on your, in within the box of the workspace, it shows all of your open windows. So it could probably get quite messy because I have like a ton of things open here now, but that's kind of cool. So you can change those key bindings by going to the uh, Fluxbox configuration file, which I'll look here, here in a minute, which I actually haven't looked at before. Although I've looked at the menu one. What I would like it actually is um, just a list of all the key bindings. So in a lot so you can resize things using the alt key. All right. So I keep learning something new here every every time I open up the help menu I, or the help documentation, I learn something new. All right. So here's something I didn't see before. You can use your own keystroke combinations by going to menu Oops, I got too much stuff open here. We gotta close some of this stuff. I'm so unused to having to click on an X to close something. Cause you can't just hit Q or <laughs> like I wanna hit I just wanna hit what, Alt Q? No. Control Q? Control Q works. Ah, see I learned something else new. That's the thing, is it's just not discoverable. So let's Supposedly, if I go to settings here in keys, keyboard, no, configure, keys. Oh, you know, this looks, correct me if I'm wrong, but this looks like X, XXHKD. <laughs> it's a little bit like SXHKD. So this is the list that I was actually looking for, for ages, trying to figure out where the like the key bindings would be. I mean, it's not the most readable thing ever. Uh, so here, here we have the F1 through F6 keys, the volume keys, hide menus, a whole bunch of mouse keys, which those aren't key bindings. If you have to use the mouse, those aren't key bindings. So this is Alt. So mod four is Control in here here. I thought mod four was alt. Alt four. No. Oops. And all that did was change my setting on OBS. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Alright. This is what I'm talking about. It's a little weird. And discovering this because like almost positive that mod 4 is alt isn't it i'm gonna have to look it up we're gonna go this is this is the way videos work now i don't know if you know this but we do research right on this on camera you know who needs to be prepared i mean that would be just <laughs> we'll let DistroTube and brody and luke smith and all those guys those guys can be prepared i'll be the disorganized linux youtuber Okay, so that was a rabbit hole if I've ever been down one. It was dark down there. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, Mod F4, from what I've been able to research, is supposed to be the alt key. So, uh, but it doesn't work that way here, because the mod, the mod 4 key is... I don't know if it's 
The reason why those keys don't work is because I have them set something else outside of VirtualBox. That's possible. It's also so Alt Tab goes to different windows as it should. Alt Shift Tab. Yeah. Alt three just types in three. Okay. I'm done with that rabbit hole. I mean, just <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, Fluxbox has been entertaining me now for a week, and I'm just quite interested in it and kind of done with it. So, why does Fluxbox exist? And I think their answer to that is that. People like floating window managers. Some people like floating window managers. And there aren't a lot of them out there. Now, every tiling window manager has a floating mode. DWM does. I3 does. BSPWM does. They all do. Uh, awesome does, obviously. Uh, and there are, but there are very, actually, it feels like there are much, there are way fewer truly f focused f floating manager, floating window managers out there. So there's open box. There's Fluxbox, and there's, I mean, there's a few of them that are based on Openbox. It's just, it seems like tiling wind managers have kind of taken over. So I think that that's the reason why it exists. And I think that it suits the aesthetic of the MX team fairly well, because they've gone to, through a kind of a minimalist kind of design in MX Links as well. Now, granted, they, in like XF, the XFCE version, they go through and rely on the GTK3 themes and stuff guys. So they haven't gone through and done their own theming and stuff where they have in Fluxbox, it seems. So I think that that's the reason why Fluxbox exists is because, you know, it's a floating window manager and a lot of people like floating window managers. Now, that being said, there are a lot of just little weird paper cutty things like the key bindings, which is little, really weird and fairly I mean, you really have to kind of dig deep in order to find them because I missed that in the the documentation a couple times because I'd been through it. And even once I found the, the the list of them, it was still kind of weird. The menu system, a little weird. It's kind of a hodgepodge of stuff because you have Rofi, you have the XFCE stuff, you have the the menu that's like open box, the open box menu. It's very... I mean, there's like four different menus, and it's really weird. Choose one. You know, I'm not a big guy on multiple options for stuff. I want, just give me an option. I just want one. I don't. I only need one, or whatever. It's, it's like installing four different video players on your ISO. It doesn't really endear me to you, because I need you to make a choice. It's just those like those little piddly things that have bothered me a little bit about my, my time with Fluxbox. The aesthetics have grown on me. When like I said when I at the beginning of this video, I talked about how the aesthetics were the first things that kind of turned me off. I'm much more. I'm gonna say tolerant of them now than I was before. I guess just because I've used it a little bit longer and it's just not as bad as I originally thought. It's the other stuff that kind of, you know, pushes me away from it. So let me know in the comments below if you're interested in using a floating window manager like Fluxbox. MX Linux itself remains awesome. I didn't go much into the whole distro this time because I've done that before and I will link that video in the cards above if I haven't already. You've probably seen it up there somewhere. MX Linux is just really, I mean, it's just really good. If you're going to use a Debian-based distro, I would either use this one or Sparky. I've looked at both of those recently, and they're both these are both really good distros if you're going to be using a Debian-based distro. I would even go as far as to say is if, if you've used Ubuntu and are kind of interested in looking for something that's not Ubuntu but still uses the same kind of package management system, I would go through and try some one of these other ones because they're really, really good and they're really, really stable. And a lot of people aren't really interested in the whole rolling release kind of thing. Uh, so if you're going to, I mean, especially MX Linux because it's built on Debian stable. So anyways, 
Thank you for watching. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash linuxcast, facebook.com slash linuxcast. You can also support, support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I don't have that social media slide or whatever that I was doing before. I'm doing a little bit of revamping with the, the graphics and stuff, as you can tell along the bottom. Just something different. Uh, but thank you for everybody who has supported us on Patreon specifically. I do still have this thing, which I need to revamp. So, Devon, Marcus, and Merrick, thank you guys for supporting us. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.